Hello, my name is Mark Hesse and I'll be teaching the new course on continuum mechanics. This course is for juniors in the revised geophysics curriculum. So why did we decide to add a course in continuum mechanics to the geophysics curriculum? Well, it's very simple. It's because the earth is dynamic and continuum mechanics is the basis for our description and our understanding of dynamic processes. Here in this slide, I've shown you four pictures from four very different aspects of the geosciences. On the top left, you see a heavily defined rock, okay? And one of the important things that we need to learn in continuum mechanics is to, to describe and to quantify deformation, something we call strain. On the top right, you see a image generated by satellite geodesy on the surface deformation uh, following a strike slip earthquake in California in this uh, fault that you can see. And this uh, deformation very nicely shows actually the stress distribution. Um, and so another important aspect of this is learning how to describe stress in a continuum body. So stress is how the forces, that how do we inside a piece of solid earth describe the forces that are acting on this, acting on this fault or anywhere else. And so the top row are really two examples of the solid earth sciences. But of course, mechanic also applies and is a crucial for uh, fluid mechanics uh, and sort of more environmental applications. On the bottom left, but you see a glacier that is spilling out between two mountains onto the ocean. And it looks like a pancake or like honey spreading onto water. And so this is what we call a very viscous flow. So this flow is dominated by the internal friction due to viscous uh, deformation. On the bottom right is a flow that is nearly inviscid. So this is an atmospheric flow. Of course, air has a much lower velocity than ice. And what you see here is um, the vorticity in this flow that forms this vortex uh, with a cloud falling in. So why should you take this? As I said, it provides the foundation for the modeling of all dynamical processes in the earth sciences. And as such, it's an excellent preparation for upper division classes or for that matter, graduate school in a wide range of subjects going all the way from geodynamics, which describes the dynamics of the earth interior to you know, climate modeling, atmospheres and oceans. On the bottom here is a very nice example of a recent student from the Odin Institute where he modeled the entire Antarctic ice shelf. And one of the results of this study is you can see that the ice flow is localized into these ice streams, which show up in red here, which is where most of the ice loss is then concentrated. What exactly will you learn? So one of the, the key things that we need to learn is we need to take concepts that you're familiar with, such as, you know, for example, mass and force, in point systems, you have a one point mass interacting with another point mass, and we need to move them from the sort of point description to a continuum description. And similarly, we need to take simple material models like, like a spring, for example, that extends or a dash plot, and we need to generalize them uh, to, you know, in, in one case, elasticity, and in the other ways, in the other limit, uh, Newtonian viscosity. And once we have that, this will allow us to describe solids and fluids. And with that, we've built the foundation to understand the, what we call the governing equations that underlie all of these um, cutting edge numerical models that people use. Um, and by understanding them, you're enabled to use them correctly. And that is very important. So on the right side is another fast application of continuum mechanics. Here you see the waves propagating through the upper part of the earth crust in response to the earthquake on these faults that are shaded in here. Now, what exactly will we be doing? So to be able to describe the stress and the strain in a continuum body, we need to move beyond the concept of a vector that you're probably familiar with. And we need to introduce something called it. Uh, in the simplest way, you can think of this as a three by three matrix that describes the state of stress or of deformation at a point in the material. And we need to be able to tensors. And so the first three weeks of this course will introduce and practice the algebra and the calculus of tensors. Once we have that basis, 
we can then apply it to the deformation of to the description of strain deformation the forces in other words stress and once we've discussed stress and strain we played balance laws okay balance laws for mass for momentum and for energy and then the last three weeks of the we will then generalize, uh, we will then consider particular material models. So we'll introduce the constitutive laws that are necessary for the description of a general fluid and of an elastic solid. Uh, and then on the right here is another exciting example of, of, of continuing mechanics at work. This is a giant impact as it thought to have happened early in the history of the earth where a very large object collides with the earth and essentially melts a significant part of the earth uh, and, and you can also see that the core of this object partially merges with the core of the Earth. Now, in terms of assessment, this uh, class will simply have weekly homeworks that you need to turn in that will help you work through the material, help you understand it, uh, but there's no exams. So I hope you'll join me and you'll learn this exciting subject of continuing mechanics so that you can then go on uh, and explore the dynamics of the Earth with a proper foundation. See you in the fall.